should hyperbaric be used on a continual basis, or do these repetitive exposures to hyperbaric actually cause more harm than it's worth? That's what we're gonna go over in today's video. Hyperbaric myths and misconceptions still run rampant throughout the industry. Quite honestly, one of the reasons we started this channel was because I believe that hyperbaric is one of the most powerful and underutilized therapy that exists in our toolbox to help patients recover from illness, or even for people who are relatively healthy to improve performance and improve health span. And I believe it's the myths and misconceptions that are actually holding this industry back. Today, I'm actually gonna react to a video that my team sent me with regard to some information that's out there about hyperbaric oxygen. Not necessarily negatively, but also not necessarily accurately. And so I'm gonna watch a few videos and ultimately just react and respond to the information being presented as to the accuracy or inaccuracy and try to make the most sense out of the information being presented so that I could help deepen the understanding of this technology and share the truth behind what it's capable or incapable of doing. Today, in support of educating tips for longevity, let me talk about caution to over-extrapolating the uses of HBOT. Hyperbaric oxygen is pressurized supply of oxygen in a chamber, which drives super normal oxygen into your system. Concerning a so far, that's pretty much true. Acute healing problems, it's great, like wounds, polytrauma, strokes, heart attack, and even decompression illnesses. So absolutely, hyperbaric's great for wounds. Decompression illness is actually where hyperbaric even started. So certainly it helps with a number of different acute issues. And hyperbaric's also very well known to help with a number of chronic illnesses because of its impact, especially on immune function, energy production, and inflammation control. Hyperbaric helps a number of people suffering with chronic illnesses to support them just as much as acute issues. HBOT excels by aiding oxygen into the tissues and healing potential. However, prolonged exposure to elevated oxygen levels may induce a problem called oxidative stress and inflammation. So now we're getting into where hyperbaric may be dangerous. I will be the first one to tell you that if there's a therapy worth doing and there are benefits associated with that therapy, there are a number of risks and consequences that we also need to keep in mind with regard to any of the tools, strategies, or services that somebody might offer you. So being aware of some of the possibilities here is incredibly important. He's about to go into oxidative stress. I'm not sure what he's gonna say about oxidative stress, but I can tell you for sure that the understanding of oxidative stress or reactive oxygen and the solution to oxidative stress, which is antioxidants, these two systems are very well misunderstood in the industry. So I'm excited to see what he's gonna say. However, I'm gonna really wanna clarify that point, I'm sure. Inflammation. This occurs when the oxygen levels exceed and cause reactive oxygen species to be formed, ROS, which are pro-inflammatory and can damage cellular structures like proteins, lipids, DNA, and trigger degenerative cell and tissue pathways that we don't want. In both traditional medicine as well as functional medicine, over the last decade, reactive oxygen species has literally been linked to as causal to a number of acute and chronic diseases. In other words, it's been blamed. ROS has been blamed as the number one cause of illness and disease. And while I'm not disputing that it plays a role, I also want to tell you that reactive oxygen species, especially ROS that is made from our body naturally as a byproduct of energy production, is also probably one of the most important cell signaling messengers that help us reduce inflammation, reduce oxidative stress, heal tissue, stimulate stem cells, and really improve our health. So we can't simply take one molecule and say, any of this is terrible, it's all the cause of disease, because it's also probably one of the most important molecules for signaling the repair side of the equation. So we have to keep that in mind as we listen. Chronic hyperbaric oxygen works against cellular resilience building. Think about this. If your cells become lazy and less able to adapt to a stressful environment, you're not doing them any favors. A hundred percent agree. If your body's getting lazy and unable to adapt to environmental stressors, that is the opposite of health. In fact, we did an entire series on a term called hormesis, which is a term used to describe the body's response to stress and how to strategically stimulate hormetic pathways over a long period of time to make sure that we're constantly challenging 
the resilience of ourselves, constantly challenging the body's ability to adapt, and constantly pushing the envelope when it comes to how well our bodies are able to adapt to an ever-changing environment. So that last sentence, I agree wholeheartedly with. However, hyperbaric is a well-known stimulant of hormesis. So it's literally the opposite of what he just said. We are on a mission to make sure that the people looking for this information have access to it. I know that there's a lot of content out there, and I know that it could be very confusing when people are trying to find the answers that they're looking for. And it's really important for me that those people can find these answers. So when you like it, when you subscribe, and when you share these videos, that helps the people looking for this content know that they're getting a trustworthy source and they're getting the information that they're trying to find. So please do that and help us help other people. By delivering higher levels of oxygen to the body, even if we talked about the increase in ROS, which is a byproduct of hyperbaric oxygen, that increased ROS has the ability to cause damage. And so that damage would also stimulate some amount of repair. So certainly increasing ROS is not allowing the body to become lazy and less resilient. In other words, it actually improves resiliency and adaptability. In addition to that, going in and out of a hyperbaric chamber or taking your mask off while you're in the chamber stimulates a wave of increasing and decreasing oxygen levels. As you stimulate a wave of increasing and decreasing oxygen levels, stimulating what's called hyperoxygenation or higher levels of oxygen than normal in your cells, and then going to back down to normal levels of oxygen in your cells, you're stimulating all of these other pathways of adaptability. As an example, HIF-1-alpha, which is one of the most important responses to hypoxia and a very potent stimulator of adaptability and resilience, is well known to be triggered through the use of hyperbaric oxygen. And so just to be crystal clear, hyperbaric is just the opposite of allowing your body to become lazy and less adaptable. It's actually triggering of many pathways that improve resilience. But let's also go back to that oxidative comment, which was hyperbaric increases oxidation, oxidation leads to disease. Because I was saying that not only does hyperbaric increase oxidation, which it does, and that oxidation could, when out of balance, stimulate disease pathways, we also said that ROS or reactive oxygen species is one of the most potent cell signaling molecules for repair and regeneration. And so when you are being over-oxidized, which many people are, and primarily over-oxidized from the outside world, in other words, pollution, toxicity, EMFs, radiation, all of these other sources of oxidation in your life, you become over-oxidized and your body's ability to respond to all of that oxidation starts to fail. As a result, tissues and cells start to get destroyed. However, when you're being oxidized through a variety of techniques internally, as I was saying, hyperbaric is not oxidative by itself, but hyperbaric increases energy production. And a byproduct of energy production is the release of some ROS. And as you increase the amount of oxygen going into the cell and you increase the amount of cellular energy being produced, you also increase the ROS being stimulated. However, there are two things to consider. One, the side that ROS is a stimulant for growth and repair and regeneration. And the other is that it becomes a stimulant to upregulate your body's capacity to increase antioxidants inside of your cells. In other words, the long-term impact of repetitive hyperbaric exposures over time is not actually a measurable increase in oxidation. It's a measurable increase in your body's antioxidants like superoxide dismutase, glutathione, catalase. These endogenous antioxidants that are already inside you become much more highly expressed due to the impact of regular hyperbaric exposures which, by the way, is a hormetic and adaptive response. Again, showing you that hyperbaric is not allowing your body to get lazy. It's forcing your body to learn how to adapt to changing levels of oxygen and changing levels of oxidation and the solution, which is the antioxidants. So while I do appreciate the information, I really felt the need to clarify some of these points because, quite honestly, these aren't outright lies. They're just half-truths that don't tell the whole story. And it's important for me, for you, to actually understand the reality of what happens to people when they're exposed to hyperbaric oxygen. I hope this tip is helpful. Leave me some comments. Let me know your experience with HBOT and anything else you want to know about. And I'll make sure the next video helps you out. Absolutely. Your video is incredibly helpful as a tool for me to help educate the public on more information, 
regarding myths and misconceptions and really the truth around hyperbaric oxygen, how it helps, how it works. So thank you, sir. I do appreciate your video and thank you for your attention during this video response. Whether you're a chiropractor or a naturopath or an acupuncturist or a DO or even an MD, but you're looking at hyperbarics through this lens, the lens that I'm describing, which is applying hyperbarics for all these off-label conditions, this is the class that teaches that. And right now it's the only class that teaches this type of hyperbarics in this way and that's an actual certification course. Check out hbotusa.com and uh, right across the, the top you'll see upcoming events. You can click on that and it'll show you uh, when our next courses are going to be.